Welcome, everybody. Welcome to uh, finishing up Junior Year Strong, um, our webinar for today. And we are so excited to talk with our rising senior families and uh, to encourage you and to help you maybe get prepared for the excitement that is the senior year experience. We do not approach the senior year with, it, with hesitation or anxiety here at Home Life Academy. We embrace it with uh, all the joy and the excitement that will come with the senior year experience. So that's what we're hoping to do today, just provide you with some information, um, some good hard guidance uh, for the next year and some loving encouragement as we go through the next year with you. Uh, my name is Rebecca Sardella. And I'm one of uh, the senior high counselors with Home Life Academy, and I work um, almost exclusively with our graduating senior students. It is my joy to provide support on Common App and in recommendation letters and any other college or scholarship application support that students need. I also provide assistance with polishing your student's portfolio and then just general guidance uh, for the senior year experience. And so that's what I love to do. I actually have a rising senior. My daughter will be graduating next year. So I'm in your boat. I'm going to be feeling all the feels, doing all the things uh, for my daughter as we go quite quickly towards her senior year. A very bittersweet experience for sure. Uh, with us today, we also have some of our other incredible counselors who work with our graduating seniors. We have Lacey Sanford, um, who is a senior year, a senior mom this year. Her oldest is graduating. Um, and then we also have Mona Hausman, who is one of our incredible 12th grade counselors who works with our families as they go through those transitions transitions, helping make sure everything is just right for the senior year experience. Um, so we're so pleased to have you with us today. As we go through the webinar today, if you have any questions, please make sure to put those in the Q&A box and we'll try to answer those as we go throughout the webinar. And then at the end, um, if, if you have a question that comes to you later, at the end of the webinar, we will display all of our email addresses, um, and you can shoot us an email at any time. Let us know what your question is, and we'll be happy to provide any assistance that we can. Our email addresses are very simple. It's just our first name at homelifeacademy.com. Life, home very simple, but we'll have those written out for you later. So for now, I'm going to turn it over to Lacey. I'm going to share my screen see if I can do that. And I'm going to sh uh, switch over to Lacey. Thank you, Rebecca. Yes, like as uh, Rebecca said, I am a, a mom of a, a senior. I'm going to be graduating my very first senior uh, in exactly one month. And so I can speak um, from the perspective of what many of you are probably feeling um, with a little bit of hindsight and a little bit of reflection. So hopefully I could be an encouragement to you guys. Um, and I just, the Lord had laid it on my heart um, to share just um, some relationship tips, I think, on how to navigate senior year. So as uh, parents of, of soon-to-be seniors, there's going to be a long list of to-dos, um, but I don't want you guys to lose sight of the whole reason why you homeschool sometimes in the first place is having good relationships with your students and um, just having uh, time, you know, family time and conversations um, amidst all of the to-do to list. So I, I, these are actual screenshots from my own phone that I have screenshotted <laughs> throughout this school year as reminders. And I wanted to share them with you. Um, there's been about every single emotion that you could feel going through my mind and my heart this year, um, increasing as it gets closer to graduation date. Um, happy, sad, uh, worried sometimes, thrilled, um, so many things going on. And it's not just the moms that are feeling this, your seniors are feeling it too. And so sometimes we feed off of each other um, when there's uncertainty and um, there's, you know, just the anxiety that you have planning um, out senior year and what you're going to do after senior year. Your, your children can sometimes sense that from mom and they can feed off of that. So I just wanted to kind of share that perspective a little bit, um, all the emotions um, to be had, and it's perfectly normal. You can do the next slide, Rebecca. So this one really hit my heart. It says, we think that it is the big moments that define our lives, the weddings, the baby, the new house, the dream job, 
the graduation, um, but really these big moments of happiness are just the punctuation marks. The narrative is written every day in the small and the simple. So we're looking ahead um, the end of the junior year to senior year, and we're, we're focusing sometimes so much on that graduation day. And that is, that is the big milestone. It's like the wedding, the baby, the new house, the dream job. But the day to day, there's going to be a whole year of every single day making up, leading up to that graduation. And that's the part that I wanted to speak on. Um, on that next slide, Rebecca, it talks about the conversations that we have. Um, sometimes my best moments in hindsight and reflecting with my senior is when he would come in pretty late at night. Um, he goes to the gym and comes home about 10 or 11. If I wanted to have a good conversation with him, that was the time that I could catch that good conversation. And so I might stay up a little bit later just to know that he's going to be walking through that door and that's going to be when he's available um, to just have a conversation with me. Um, a lot of times just sharing inside jokes back and forth and we, we send each other reels and stuff that, that are funny. It's those things that I'm savoring. I promise I won't cry on this. It's that it's those moments <laughs> during senior year that I will look back on and reflect on that has, um, has meant uh, the most to me. <laughs> um, amidst all the planning and the to-do list, um, he told me recently, and I wanted to share just share this is um, I'm a, I'm a type A person, and I like to have um, a checklist, and I'm a planner and a preparer, and that got me to uh, always wanting the conversations that we had to be about school or about um, checking in about applications or checking in about ACT prep, and you know every single conversation. That's where I was kind of like steering it, and he said, "Mom," he said please, can we just talk like we used to? And that was conviction um, for me. And so in hindsight, in, in reflection, as a mom of a senior now, I just wanted to remind you guys to just not lose sight of those little things that are so precious and so sweet and will last way beyond <laughs> the, the things of senior year. And so one of the most powerful gifts that we can ever give our children while they figure out who they want to be is to let them know how much we love who they already are. And so I know there's so much pressure. Um, your seniors will start getting the questions on what are you going to do after high school? And almost every conversation seems to go to that. If you're out in public and you run into people at the grocery store and things, you know, where are you going to go to school after this? What are you going to do? What do you want to be when you grow up? And that's a lot of pressure to put on someone who's 17 years old. Um, and so sometimes it's just a sweet reminder to let your children know that you love who they are in this moment. Um, they have a plan and a purpose during senior not year. It's not going to begin when they graduate. Um, it's, it's who they are right now as a person and a purpose. So... With all of that being said, um, there are some things that we do have to plan ahead of time so that we're not overwhelmed senior year and so that we can um, have that time to enjoy those moments. And so Rebecca and Mona have both held my hand through this year and they've given me some rising senior reviews. They've written recommendation letters for me uh, on behalf of Evan. They've helped us to um, apply and send our transcripts to schools. And so um, all of those things are very much necessary, and we hope throughout this webinar that some of the information that we provide to you will be helpful. Uh, I threw in this little lighthearted joke because um, FAFSA would be like, I see your parents usually get two toppings on their pizza. You must not need aid. We've got to laugh about some of this stuff or we're going to cry <laughs> about it. I have lived to tell you that you will get through all of the applications. You will get through the FAFSA form. You will get through... Um, career job shadowing things, all of that stuff. Um, but I wanted to encourage you that that is what HLA counselors are for. We are here to help you. It's much like running a race. Um, the finish line is in sight for junior year. You've got the runner, right? And you've also got the people that are on the sidelines that are cheering you on. And you've got somebody at the end of the uh, finish line that's going to be giving you that hug and that high five. And so if you kind of keep that perspective in mind, that's the way I've visualized this. Um, we are 
on the sidelines with you. We're going to cheer you on to help you to, to see that end in sight and get across that finish line. And then we're going to high five you guys when you're submitting those diploma requests at the end of next year, we celebrate with you guys. Um, your students are dear to us. Uh, we hear their post-graduation plans and celebrate with you. Um, we love to hear after they graduate what they go on to do. Um, there's going to be highs and there's going to be lows. And so we're also available to just listen and to vent and to encourage you during that time. Um, my own son has a little bit of senioritis, and so <laughs> that will happen as well. And uh, we've got plenty of counselors who's been through that kind of stuff, too, and that can kind of just help, you know, share some perspective. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Mona, who's been um, just a joy for me and a big support and encouragement. Right. Thank you so much, Lacey. I was right in there with you with every step for sure the highs the lows all the ins and outs for sure i'm gonna just briefly before i jump into some more practical things for junior year i'm gonna just remind everybody watching it looks like we have lots and lots of folks from all over south africa tennessee you know all other states so uh, and you've all kind of posted um, in the chat. Now that's going to be disabled. And in, but any f questions that you have for the nuts and bolts of you know your your senior year planning for that, you can post at the bottom of your screen. If you click on Q and A, you can post questions there, and we can uh, monitor that and respond on the spot or a little later at the end. And uh, and so just wanted to call your attention to to those things. So I am going to um, just again welcome everybody. Let you finish drying your eyes, right? We're gonna we're gonna switch gears and just be very practical now. Um, so so great to feel all the things for sure. It's important. Our kids are gonna feel it. We're gonna feel it, and it's okay to do that. Um, so grateful that we can we can honestly one of the best bits of in, of of guidance I got I've, and have passed on is we grieve, we grieve some senior year, right? We grieve some of the losses. We grieve what could have been. We grieve the baby years and the growing up years, but we grieve to be able to just have that closure in order to have some open space inside ourselves to welcome what is to come. And the best is yet to come in many ways. I mean, what a joy to continue to watch this life unfold as you do get to watch and um, and to, and potentially to put to rest some of the tensions that may have developed or, uh, you know, some of the confusion that has evolved and 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 to just continue to learn, continue to learn how to do life, continue how to learn, learn how to be in a new relationship with your emerging adult. All those things can begin to happen. So not being intimidated by grieving the loss in order to open the door for a new a new way going forward. So, <clears throat> so great. Um, I'm going to share my screen uh, at this point. Uh, let's say, no, give me a, a nod if you can see. So uh, our favorite family here at Home Life Academy, um, Frodo Baggins, we've, we've done, we've, we've poked around in Apple Core with, Frodo for graduating senior issues. And now Sam Wise, we're going to poke around because he's a junior this year. And so if you are, hopefully if you, if you are a new family, you may not have been in Apple Corps a lot, just log into your My HLA account and click on the Apple Corps button. That's how you get to this place. You should see your students' names and then you have access immediately to um the, the things that you will need to do to see uh, they, your students' uh, information from 9th, 10th, 11th grade, all the different years previously. You just click on that first button and you can see um, if you've been to a previous school, the previous records will have been entered for you. Or if you're brand, brand new or joining up next, you know, for the upcoming year, then those will be added over the summer. So here for uh, Samwise, we have um, him as at in the 23-24 school year as a junior, and he is in the 11th grade, and he's got uh, some, some grades posted in some course titles 
the ones that are completed are already down here all the way back to eighth grade where he took a couple of early high school credit courses while he was still in the eighth grade um algebra one and physical science up here there is a a a pathway that we we love to see this. If you click on this, you can choose a pathway for your students. You can always go in from year to year and change that pathway. Based on what Sam was doing, it looks like he was on maybe a college four path even by because he was taking these early high school credits and he was taking some honors classes by the 10th grade. So I'm guessing he started out maybe um, here in in maybe the college four path or the college two path. But at some point, he switched to the life choice path designed for students who are maybe going to go a, a career path or a technical path. They're not going to necessarily go to be applying for colleges, um, but they still might. They're holding the door open either way. But we like to see this to just kind of see the lens that you're seeing through. And in terms of that relational and and as Lacey was talking about that conversation those conversations that you can have with your student as things evolve in their life i do really recommend you know a lot of times we start we start off with our big picture of the four year plan and we know how it's going to we just know how it's going to unfold because our student is so sharp and they're doing great and you know we know they're going to go to a four-year university and need lots of uh, academic scholarships and all that. And so we we set it up as if they're going to do that, right, all the way through. And many of them do. You know, probably a third of our students go to a four-year university right after graduation, and we love to help them. Rebecca will speak more into that, you know, as far as pursuing scholarships, really being ready to hit the ground running senior year. But many times by the 10th or 11th grade, you, you've hopefully begun to open up, lay the foundation, lay, create an environment where your student feels safe with you, saying things like, you know, I might, I might not want to go to college, mom, you know, or I, I really, I'm interested, like here, Sam, I'm really interested in welding, or they've been doing some creative writing, or they've been doing some hands-on, you know, lots of outdoors things, and they have discovered a skill set within themselves that may or may not lend them to a traditional college path or a full-time career locked in an office, right? So as you've been really listening and really giving them opportunities to kind of explore, you know, we do that while we're in, uh, well, while we have the freedom to homeschool, hopefully we, we can, you know, step aside a couple of days every so often and just explore some other possibilities. As you've been listening, as you've been kind of thinking through, as you've been maybe even seeing some some struggles, some learning struggles or some boredom or some just additional challenges. Certainly every student that went through the pandemic years experienced some challenges, right? And felt the tension globally and locally and have questioned what is it that I want out of life? Or what is it that I'm really good at? What can I do, you know, not to fall into some of the traps that people are falling into uh, and and students, you know, are, are experiencing middle school, high school, the challenges are there, right? So we're talking about them. We're not being afraid of them with our families. And, and, and we're hearing sometimes, you know, Maybe I'd like to either delay college or or do something different for a while. That's okay. Um, having those conversations are important. So, so we can still help you uh, lay out of the rest of the couple of years, 11th grade, 12th grade, to make sure that nothing is falling through the cracks. Graduation can still be right on track. Potentially, even college, you know, can still be on the radar. But if if we need to help identify some additional course options. Let's do that, right? So it looks like for Sam in particular, started off doing math, you know, algebra one and geometry. Algebra two looks like started to really struggle, right? That's pretty common to figure that out, you know, uh, halfway through high school. We are not intimidated by that at all at Home Life Academy. We're happy to talk about other options for math to just not feel like you're locked into 
one way or one curriculum or one approach. So Sam started struggling, it looks like, and potentially it looks like he, he only finished the year with two quarter credits, so a half credit here of Algebra 2. So they maybe had to put on the brakes. He was also taking personal finance. He was creating a budget, getting a part-time job, saving for travel. Like he was doing some things that, you know, could be math, but it was taking a different turn and that's okay too. So in uh, by 11th grade, you know, maybe we had had a conversation about that and started exploring some other things. He still managed to fin finish up Algebra 2 and split that over two years. That's great. Um, then started starting on maybe some business math, some practical things. He's setting up a lawn business for himself. He's actually meeting with an accountant and doing some client invoices. This is a great way to finish up a remaining math credit and still feel like you're not behind. You're still right on track. There's still, you know, colleges. If he were to apply to a college, he's got the algebra one and then geometry and finishing up the algebra two that colleges look for, but he's also considering some other things. He's not maybe delving straight into pre-calculus. That's okay. Uh, in his case, it looks like he's got an entrepreneurial little gift here. And so that's great to see that he is you know, just being able to explore some other possibilities there. He's doing, it looks like in science or, or electives, he's doing kind of a horticulture intensive with some hands-on projects and gardening and landscaping and entering a competition. That's fabulous and could totally lead to a full-time career, right? So all of these things are good possibilities. And when we see these kinds of things, we'll be able to enter that kind of information or a counselor notes about those things. Um, in the um, 11th grade transcript review, we are now calling it the uh, rising senior review. So for Sam, this high school review button right here, pro about half of our juniors have already received an email with their their um, rising senior review in an email, or you can go into Apple Core yourself right now and just see if yours has been posted. Uh, the the remaining um, juniors will get those by the end of spring or summer. We're all working on them right now. You can click on this button and it'll take you to the credit summary where you can see how, how uh, how they're doing, you know, in terms of the credits that are required, the credits that they've completed so far, and the credits that are still needed. So um, then when you click on the detailed summary, it's going to take you on into exploring more, more um, of what you have put in for them. The three English are in there for Sam and all of that math. He's he's right on track and the extra things that he's been doing for science, including some of the uh, the different things that he's been doing to supplement even for this honors marine biology. He did go to a tutor, but also he took a field trip to the ocean and he's been doing some snorkeling and dissections and things like that that can supplement a course to make it an honors course. And, and all of that can be, you know, a good way of showing what they're passionate about on paper in uh, in Apple Core that will translate to the transcript. And then here here's how he really shines. These electives that Sam has been doing, the apprenticeship that he's going to be doing potentially with welding with a local artisan, the woodwork he's been doing, the visual arts, robotics, like he's been doing a lot of hands-on type things. This is his sweet spot, right? We want to let him shine here by showing that this is what he's really passionate about. This is the direction he's going, whether he goes to college or just goes right into his own, you know, business or um, or career. So this is just a different way to see all the things that you've put in Apple Core and how that translates into uh, your student and and how on track they are for graduation purposes. Um, let me back out just a smidge. Um, back into. Sam, um, whenever he is, whenever you are in Apple Core, um, here are some great tools that not everyone is aware of. So I just want to bring them to your attention as you're, especially if you have a moment, you know, like a panic moment, 
at midnight where you're anticipating senior year and you're just afraid because I hear it all the time. I'm afraid I've just messed something up, right? You haven't. It's all going to be fine, but you're having the panic moment and there's nobody to talk to, right? So you want to get some answers. Here are some great tools right here for you in Apple Core. So under the help button, this is a great place to go whenever you just kind of need to figure out how to set things up, um, how to do do the, you know, do all the details in Apple Core. There's also a video link right there for how to ed enter your education plan. So for your upcoming senior year, you can click on this video and go right on into where Christy Welcome is going to, Apple Core to Christy's going to jump right in with you to to give you some tips on how to enter your education plan. And um, and that's that's a huge help. Even even great as a refresher, you know, just a reminder for how that needs to needs to be laid out. You'll need to do that before you re-enroll, have that education plan in potentially even now. We're happy to look at it during junior year to see if anything looks like it's missing for senior year. Also, this little uh, button right here, the FAQ. Wow, it's fabulous. Even if you don't want to plow through all these questions, <laughs> this is the best tutorial video quick link right here. It takes you straight to our Home Life Academy um, YouTube channel. And you can find this. This webinar will be posted at some point in the next couple of weeks. You can find all of our webinars for the things, so there's a previous the one. Okay, so like all of the things that we've done in the past for seniors, for uh, creative things that we've tried to throw together in small bits or in larger bits, when you have moments where you just need to kind of search and find some quick answers or some inspiration, it's here for you. Um, just another way we're trying to explore different ways to communicate um, even if you can't get us on the phone right then, or you're waiting on an email response, or you're just not sure what's available. These are some great things to explore right there, 24 seven, anytime you need it right there in your, uh, Apple Corp. So, um, Mona, we had a question come in that maybe you might want to touch on, um, the, uh, the parent writes, hi, I just wanted to you'll touch on the topic of the three-year high school we're going into the third year, so we're planning to do junior, senior year next school year. What do I need to know to be well prepared for that? So, um, so the the three year plan is yes. that what? You're saying? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So there's lots of different approaches for the three year plan. Also, Home Life Academy offers a five year plan. Mm -hmm. You know, even big picture, lots of times homeschoolers are ready to graduate in December of senior year. So there there are all kinds of different options. In general, we love it if you can set up a counselor call with one of us so that we can just explore one-on-one -on -one with what makes the most sense for your situation and think through, you know, next steps. Because because big picture, you don't want to request that diploma until everything is at least mostly lined up, right, for those next steps. So give yourself, give yourself some time to reach out to a counselor and we can explore those, you know, we, we love to hear your big picture. We love to, th to hear what you're thinking you might do. What is your motivation for that three-year plan? You know, what, what is fueling that, that drive either in your student or in your family's situation where you feel like this is the answer, you know, quickly getting through the 11th and 12th grade all in one year uh, or, you know, maybe your student at the end of junior year only has for the basics, for the minimum requirements, only has an English and a math class left. You've done everything else and you're thinking we could knock that out in summer. Help, let us help you by at least having a quick conversation about what we've seen, pros and cons of what can happen in your situation, depending on what you tell us your student is thinking their next steps are. So we can just help you think through. Are there any are there any situations where I might be blindsided later on, right? By by calling it too soon, um, are and we are ha we don't want to scare you. We don't want we're we're not using that conversation to try to talk you into one more year. We just want to help you think through what makes the most sense. So, for example, 
where we are, I'm in Chattanooga, Tennessee. So in Tennessee, um, a number of our students are anticipating uh, using um, scholarship funds that our state provides for all, you know, graduating seniors to either go to a community college or a four-year university or a technical college. But the the thing is, though, if you're if you're applying for one of those in particular, the Tennessee Promise, we call it, um, you've got to do that senior year, early in senior year. And that for a student who's doing a three-year plan, that means what you might be calling junior year or fall semester, which would be when in, they're doing junior courses. So they are going to need to apply for the Tennessee Promise Scholarship before November 1st, even, I mean, early in that final school year, even if they're not technically a senior yet. So we like to help you think those things through, right? So that you don't miss out on something, some doors that you want to maybe potentially keep open. But once we hear from you and once we, you know, can kind of check that box and 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 help you think through, uh, then we are happy to help in Apple Corps set things up so that it does make sense for a three-year plan is certainly doable. Home Life Academy doesn't offer a two-year plan or even a two and a half year plan. So when I said graduate in December, potentially that meant like three and a half years. So, but anyway, we are happy to think through if my student were thinking about doing, you know, English 11 and a math course and maybe U.S. history and then an elective and knock it all out in fall semester, and then finish up in spring semester with English 12 and, uh, you know, a final math course, any remaining electives that haven't been completed, uh, put putting those in tentatively for that spring semester or on into the summer so that everything is complete for, mm -hmm. you know, junior, senior year. Uh, that third year and finishing that up. So it is it is certainly doable. Um, sometimes, you know, uh, students do that. Uh, my son had a dear friend who did that. Absolutely went right through and and then went all the way fast, like through college even, and then kind of put on the brakes. <laughs> like because he was getting ready to graduate at age 20 from a four-year university and was starting to discover that he wasn't quite ready for career and uh, real life. And he, you know, had only had his driver's license for a couple of years and, you know, different things. He wasn't really, he hadn't really, he was very driven. He was very uh, efficient and, and uh, capable, but he hadn't really thought through, okay, wait, wait, I'm going to be like on my own paying bills and paying taxes and, you know, all of those things. And so um, it's worth it just to, again, have those conversations, really see what's at the heart of what's driving your student, and then work with them to try to figure out, all right, how can we make this happen? Or sh is there a reason to put on the brakes? Either way, we are happy to help. So does that make sense? Did I miss anything, Lacey? You talked to a lot of a um, lot of students and parents. No, too. I think I think that's the thing. Just, um, you know, we we love to hear the conversations and, and what you're thinking about um, the plans. And you guys know your family and your students better than we do. And so we're super supportive of that. Um, but like Mona said, just helping you make sure that, you know, it's been thought through where you don't miss some deadlines or, and things like that. Um, and you think about, you know, um, next steps. But we did have a question kind of um, on the flip side of that. It said, hi, if the child is behind with some subjects, how do we navigate senior year? Okay, sure. So, so similarly, like, like I had talked about Sam splitting algebra two over two years and then kind of like putting on the brakes a bit and going a different direction that can happen at any time, any time, really, it is okay. That's why we homeschool, right? To give our students the freedom and flexibility to go at their own pace, to reach the milestones that, that mean the most to them um, and not necessarily have to be uh, put in a box, right, for going going through a traditional, uh, predictable timeline. If your student is is not ready to graduate uh, or even be a senior yet, a Home Life Academy offers a five year option, which I mentioned before, and we're happy to talk through that as well. Um, all of those 
all of the, if, if your student is only behind in, you know, one, one or two things, maybe, you know, it's, it's, it can sometimes be resolved simply by adjusting to a lower, a lower expectation, right? Of, or a different curriculum or a different approach. And then the light bulb, you know, goes off and, and they get right back on track. Um, so, so we, we, Ideally, again, we'd like to talk about that with you to help you figure out what would work for your situation, for your student. Uh, but I do, I just want to, I just want to throw out the, the, the possibility and, and the mindset that it is still doable, even if you feel like things are getting behind. All of us face those challenges, right? Even on into adulthood, we get behind we have to regroup. We have to reach out and get some advice and, you know, think through what's really meaningful and what matters. And then sometimes it means letting go of, of, a, of a predictable way of doing things in order to try something different. And we can build, we can help you build that in to, you know, Apple Core or to your four-year plan or on into a five-year plan. Uh, you know, it's a beautiful thing that summers are a part of homeschool world. We we really can just take a break, diffuse I, the situation and go on. I was going to speak on that just a tad bit. I'm going to use myself as an example. And um, I have always teased that my son would be doing math um, up until <laughs> his wedding night. <laughs> and it's kind of halfway accurate because we figured out with his math, I, again, am a planner and I looked at all the lessons he has yet to do in senior year. Now, mind you, he's supposed to be graduating on May 18th. And I even made an Excel spreadsheet and told him, okay, you've got to do two lessons a day to get to it done. And then I had to take a pause and I had to exhale and think grand scheme of things. Okay. He's worked on his math throughout senior year. He has absorbed what his mind could absorb about algebra right now. And in the grand scheme of things, to finish every single lesson, to call it complete so that he's not, quote, behind on it, I gave it up. I gave up that battle because, you know, it's 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 we think I think sometimes that we have to check these boxes and we we think that our students are behind um, but the whole point and the freedom and the flexibility of learning and, and homeschooling is that, you know, you're if you're re retaining what you've learned up to that point to get you to the next step of what you need to do post high school, you know, is he prepared to sit in a class and learn under a different instructor? Yes. You know, if he was going entrepreneur route, can he manage, you know, some things he'll learn on the job. So keep the big picture like Mona's saying and um, I, I am using myself as an example of sometimes what not to be because I, I feel and I hear your hearts, um, but don't necessarily think that they're behind on that. He, yes, he will finish math um, up to the point to what where he can finish it, and then we're going to call it good. So hope that helps a little. Absolutely. And, and isn't that, I mean, really what we hear a lot is math. We're struggling in math. Or, or sometimes writing skills or whatever, but by and large, uh, this is this is a this is a difficult issue for not just homeschoolers. All you know, really, I don't know. How, I love it that we have so many families right today in this session in South Africa. I would love to know, you know, what what is the mystery here? Why why in the U.S. do students seem to really struggle in math? But um, but for sure. Here at Home Life Academy, we do have lots of different suggestions, options, and especially for those students who are not by senior year finding themselves in the you know a fairly intense situation where they're 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 really having to compete for scholarships and you know all of that, and they need all the math they can get. They want to raise their ACT score. Okay, there's going to be you know maybe twenty five percent of the students who are in that boat and. I, I can recommend ACT prep or SAT, you know, or tutors, things like that. However, for the remaining students who are not necessarily going to be taking calculus, you know, in college or a pre-calculus even, and, and they've done okay, you know, so far so good, but they might just senior year be in a place where you find that an alternate math option is a possibility. And you can even spot check on college websites and find out that they don't always expect to see higher math beyond Algebra 2 or a kind of a college ready ACT score, right? Even to get into a four year university, right? It's just, 
sometimes our expectation is higher than reality when it comes to the, the student's next steps. So on the Home Life Academy website, we have a whole page geared just towards senior options for math. And if you go into, so not in, not in Apple Core where you're just posting your grades, but, but when you just go to homelifeacademy.com and you put in the search bar, math options, that, that senior math option page is going to pop up with other possibilities, business math, consumer math, STEM-based math, like a business, an intro to business or, or, or a, a, a more hands-on approach, you know, coding as far as like students who are wanting to go the direction of potentially a career in computer, you know, they don't necessarily have to have, uh, even for, even for my kids who did go to a four-year university, they, they experimented with some dual enrollment, a, a statistics class, or just a college math class, rather than jumping straight into college algebra. And they were pleasantly surprised that they could, that they didn't have to just do one kind of math, you know, that they, they, they didn't have to necessarily be honing their trig skills all the time, right? They, they could take a, take a different, uh, a different approach and, and see that there are lots of options out there. Um, sometimes maybe they can, it can seem like they're harder to find, but, uh, but, but we can help you figure that out. So don't get, go, don't get hung up on the math for senior year. And, um, and certainly I agree with Lacey. I think this is, this is what we hear every so often from, from frustrated moms. Um, okay. I'm just going to have to assign an, an F on the final transcript because either like senioritis has kicked in and they're just refusing to do any more math or, um, you know, they've just hit a wall and they're maxed out and what they really need is, is some understanding and some, some new way to connect the dots. Some mm -hmm. maybe, maybe practical approach to see how this doesn't have to be what we've done before. We're all still learning. It's all still an experiment, right? We can still keep learning what is actually needed. And let's just figure it out as we go and not have to feel like you're locked in a box when it comes to all those different things. So we're, we're getting some good questions off of that, Mona. Um, so uh, a couple uh, I'm going to throw at you. So can they still get into a four-year college without Algebra 2 if they struggle with math? If you wanted to, um, Rebecca, would you like to answer that one? Uh, yeah. So the standard answer that we give is you need to check with the colleges that the student's interested in because their admission requirements are their admission requirements and we can't control that. So um, if your student is interested in going to a particular college or if they have a collection of schools that they're interested in, um, you just need to make sure you check with them for what their admission standards are so that you can be sure that you're meeting um, those admission standards as you go through the junior and, and senior years or through the high school journey. So, yeah. And then Mona, is there any testing required or any other check boxes required um, outside of the 22 credits? So I think they're asking about HLA specific uh, graduation requirements. I think you're on mute, Mona. <laughs> you, can't, you can't read my lips. Okay, so um, Home Life Academy does not require ACT or SAT. So we recommend it for students who are going to be trying to apply to a four-year university, uh, or some in some cases for students who are planning to go to a community college, you know, that might have an ACT requirement. Um, it, it can also be useful when it comes to scholarships, right? A lot of scholarships in, in many different states or situations are going to be uh, contingent on a particular ACT or SAT score. Sometimes colleges have been experimenting with waiving those or, or uh, providing a way to um, get through admissions with just an essay or or an interview or things like that. So it's certainly worth exploring uh, with different colleges. Home Life doesn't require um, dual enrollment or uh, or final tests or any any of those kinds of things. So, um, but that said, again. Sometimes even students who aren't necessarily going to need to take the ACT or SAT, sometimes it can be benefit students to take a dual enrollment class, a, high, a college level class while they're still in high school. And this will also vary from state to state or area to area. 
Um, again, in the state of Tennessee, um, our, our TSAC organization that kind of offers different scholarships for all the different situations offers a dual enrollment grant. Florida offers some from di some different dual enrollment uh, grant possibilities and can pay for those for even for homeschool students, right? So you can potentially uh, do for free, you know, some college courses while still in high school. There are always pros and cons of that as well. But sometimes for those students who may or may not have a strong, strong, you know, background in math and, and, but they're strong in everything else. They're a really good writer. They're really good, you know, at literature and all of that. They, they could try, um, you know, a composition course in college and that way prove themselves, you know, on paper, on the transcript and, and in their life experience that they've already got a college, you know, course under their belt. So there are different approaches, different ways to kind of view, you know, what, what, um, what a student is capable of, what they what they're really skilled and 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 what their sweet spots are and and things like that. So definitely worth um, talking about, thinking through. Uh, don't don't just don't just rule it out. So I'll anytime I talk about dual enrollment too, I do like to include the possibility that many students can who are not going to a four year university or some who may be going to a four-year university, but they just are very hands-on and want to try to achieve a technical certification of some sort while they're still in high school. That can sometimes be a possibility, you know, for if your student is, as long as there's not like an age requirement or any other obstacles, you can check with technical colleges. Um, sometimes apprenticeships and internships are available in your area. The, those kinds of things can sometimes, you know, launch your student into their career I've even talked to students who plan to go to a four-year university, but while they're still in a high school, they want to go ahead and get whatever, fill in the blank, you know, their welding certification. You know, dad has a construction business and it just makes a lot of sense for the part-time job for the student to be, you know, whether it's um, for art purposes. I've seen students who are just really excited about art and want to do welding and they want to pull that in. You know, it, the the opportunities are out there and certainly nationwide, it would appear that the job market is is in, de, in demand. They're, de, they're, they're needing some skilled workers and are open to the possibility that, you know, a 17 or 18 year old might be ready to learn some of those special skills, even while in high school and there may be a way to even have that paid for, uh, but or just even get on a waiting list. In in some cases, those technical paths are are so popular that there's already a waiting list, and you can begin to explore that senior year. Get your students on the waiting list so that they can jump right into it. Um, we can we can uh, help steer you in the right direction, or we certainly love to hear your stories about what you encounter, what you find, and uh, what your student is able to achieve even while in high school. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mona. Um, good insight. Um, we did have a Common App question, so I was thinking that it would be a good time to transition to Rebecca. She's going to speak a little bit about the Common App and some other um, senior year uh, tasks and things to keep on the radar. Thank you. Thank you, Lacey. Thank you, Mona, for all that wonderful information, as always. Um, and so as uh, we go towards the senior year, inevitably, uh, there are a lot of our students who are applying to colleges, and there are different ways that you can do that. You can apply directly through the college's website, go directly through their application process. Um, but something that is becoming more common and more popular is a website called Common App. And Common App is just as the name implies. It is a website where students can complete an application, submit essays, and upload all of your pertinent information onto a single website. And colleges, all the colleges that you choose, can have access to that all to that information. So you're only having to enter it once instead of having to do it through each individual college colleges of direct application process. So Common App is a great resource for students who are throwing a wide net and applying to several different colleges uh, that utilize the website. Now there are a couple of uh, 
warnings that I will give you before you go through the process. Uh, before your student starts the application, make sure that the college does that they're interested in actually utilize Common App. And so if you go to the Common App's website, you can uh, there's a listing that you can see by state or just a, a straight listing of what colleges utilize that platform. More smaller colleges are beginning to utilize it. It used to be just the larger schools, state schools that were doing it, but there are more colleges utilizing it every single year. So before you start anything, make sure the colleges that they're interested in are doing it. And honestly, if there's only one school that your student's interested in, it might be more beneficial just to go through the direct application process than doing all of the information on Common App. But if your student does decide to use Common App, uh, when you go through that process, you need to make sure you list Home Life Academy as their high school. Now, for that circumstance, they would actually be considered a private school student because Home Life Academy is a category for private school in Tennessee. Um, so you would list Home Life Academy as their high school, and you would list me, Rebecca, as their counselor. And by doing that, that gives me the ability to provide full um, support, counseling, Link support on that website and that includes uploading official transcripts, a school report for your student, and recommendations if your student needs recommendations uploaded to Common App. So um, you just add my email, it's Rebecca at homelifeacademy.com um, when they ask who the counselor is for your student and that will give me the access and Home Life Academy the access to provide that full support on the Common App website. Now, as you go through other applications throughout the senior year, college and scholarship applications, any place that asks for a high school counselor, please feel free to list my information. I'm always happy to provide that support to our students. Again, in the in the areas of uploading a transcript, uploading a school report, or a recommendation to any, all of the schools will want at least one of those things. <laughs> and that is something that we are happy to provide at Home Life Academy for your graduating students. So you can say, how can you do a recommendation letter? You don't know my kid, you've never met us. Well, there's a formula for that. And so when you reach out to me and say, I need a recommendation letter, um, I will send you a really, uh, uh, some information, some, requests for supplemental information that we have found works best in our efforts to cultivate a personalized recommendation letter for your student. So I'm not going to fib and say, this student is the best student that I've ever known in all of my years of ever working with high school students, because I can't say that, because chances are, I've never had the privilege of meeting your student. But what I can say is Billy is incredibly involved in best buddies. And this is what he has done throughout his high school years in support of this organization. And so I will just ask you for information that you, the parents, can provide that will allow me to cultivate a recommendation letter that is as personalized as it can be and that will highlight the strengths and the passions and the pursuits and the future goals of your student to put them in the best light possible for those college and scholarship applications. Um, so that's something that I love to do. I love working with our families to cultivate recommendation letters. Um, I know the other counselors laugh, kind of chuckle because um, I find great joy in, in doing that when um, others may may not <laughs> enjoy well, doing I, that. My <laughs> own son was a recipient of one of your very personalized recommendation letters and I will say, um, it's it's nice just to have a have a piece of paper as a reflection, even if you might not necessarily need it um, now. Um, a, a, a career, a, a job interview, I don't know what it, you use it for, but for me, it was just a sweet reflection of of seeing something written about my son and and really what he did throughout his high school years that that mattered or that we wanted to remember. So it is actually a sweet keepsake, Rebecca. Thank you for putting oh. thought into, and care into those letters. Yes, and thank you. And thank you for that. Thank you for that. Um, another way to really effectively show what your student has done throughout their high school journey is a portfolio. So when you log into Apple Corps, where you see your student's name, um, it's the middle button. It says portfolio. Uh, you can just click on that. And that is a wonderful resource for you to document 
things that your student have done outside of the academic realm. So the transcript tells the academic story of your student's high school journey. And then the transcript can talk about the personal growth, personal development part of your student's high school journey. So what do you enter in a portfolio? Well, I've done a whole webinar on that, so I'm not going to go through all of it right now. <laughs> but any kind of social activities where a student has taken leadership responsibilities can be included. Citizenship endeavors, any kind of advanced training or special training that your student has gone through, any special programming they've attended, like if they've attended Teen Pact or governor schools or any kind of like invitational summer programs, those can all be included on the uh, portfolio. So if you have questions about, about the portfolio, please send me an email. I'm happy to share the webinar with you. You can look for it on YouTube, on Home Life Academy's um, YouTube page. It's called Building an Effective High School Portfolio is the name of the webinar, and I'm also happy to email you those direct links if you're interested in watching it. I'm always happy to look at portfolios to provide guidance and suggestions on how to polish it up. A portfolio can be attached to a student's academic transcripts when they're sent to colleges. You, need, you just need to let us know that you would like that attached. Um, and so that can just be a really great way of talking a little bit more about the personal side of a student versus their academic achievements throughout the high school years. Um, and talking about transcripts. And this is to be something that you will have to do at some point during their senior year if they're applying to colleges is how to request a transcript. You just log into your My HLA account, your family account there through our website, and you'll click where it says Create Request. And then there's an option for a transcript request. You'll select that option, you'll list your student's name, and make sure you tell us where you want the transcript sent. So that can be fax numbers, email addresses a physical address if that's what the school wants, um, and we can make sure that those transcripts get sent out to the colleges. Now, if your student uses Common App, you do not have to do that because that is built into the Common App process. But if you need a, a transcript for a reason outside of Common App, then you can submit that request at any time, and our record staff are, do a wonderful job. Lacey works with them, liaisons with them to make sure that those records are sent out in a timely manner. Now, make sure everything in Apple Corps is the way you want it to be, you and your student want it to be, before you submit those transcript requests. Because once a transcript is sent to a college, we cannot make any adjustments to course grades um, and, and course titles. Because once that's sent out, it's out in the world. And we try uh, to maintain the integrity of our transcripts for our students' benefit. Uh, that is that is our, our 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 approach to that. So make sure you double triple check Apple Corps. All the course titles are right. All the grades are right. You're happy with how how all of that looks before you submit those transcript requests. Um, and then again, we're happy to take care of those um, in a timely manner as we go through that um, academic. And you can request those for college applications and scholarship applications. A lot of scholarship applications will ask for those. A great way to see what your student's transcript will look like will be to request one. You can go in and just say, I would like to submit a transcript request and I'd like it emailed to me. And we can take care of that. That way you can see what your student's transcript uh, will, will look like. So. On that That's note, nice. we had a question about the timing of transcripts, and I'll speak on that. They were asking about how long it usually took for a turnaround if they're applying for scholarships and then need to request a transcript. So in general, if, um, you know, first of all, like Rebecca said, we would love to look over the transcript um, if you have any questions about it. Um, so in general, if the transcript is correct and accurate, about 10 business days, uh, peak season might be a tad bit longer, but there is an option for a rush um, if you are, um, you know, pressed on a deadline. We we try to do everything in our power to get transcripts out um, timely so that you guys don't miss important deadlines and things. So we're definitely um, workable, but there are peak seasons. And uh, so I would generally say allow a good couple weeks ahead of time. <laughs> Three weeks would be a blessing. <laughs> better yeah. better earlier than late, but we, we do our best to accommodate. Absolutely. And the same thing with recommendation letters. If you know that your student's going to need a recommendation letter, you can start 
contacting me starting that process late July. We can go ahead and get it done, get it on file. We put all the recommendation letters in your student's file. So if it comes back later and you need one for a scholarship, I can just slightly tweak the one that I've already completed for college applications for a scholarship application. So we're not having to recreate the wheel every time we do those. But during peak season, it can be up to two full business weeks, 10 business days before I might be able to uh, generate a, a, a recommendation letter for your student. So planning in advance, sending that information in in advance so we, we have it on file, that is a great way to approach the, the senior year. Um, and speaking of which, there are some deadlines that we uh, would like to just give you as a heads up um, for your planning purposes. If you're planners, like all of us tend to be, <laughs> um, you will know. So typically August 1st is when Common App opens and most colleges open their application processes as well. Now again, all of these dates are subject to change and they can be slightly different based on which college you're looking at. But generally, all of that processes start on August the 1st. That is go date, especially for Common App. Um, October is typically when the FAFSA opens. Now, this year it has been a bit of a fiasco. It didn't actually open until January, which has been crazy <laughs> for everybody involved. But they are hoping that next year it will be back on track. And so um, potentially it will open in October. And, of course, we, Home Life Academy, will convey that information to you as we get it from the federal government as to when FAFSA will actually open. Um, and then November 1st, this is a big one. All of our Tennessee families, if you're living in Tennessee, I need your ears for a second, apply for Tennessee Promise. Even if you're not sure your student's going to utilize it, we encourage you to complete the application process for Tennessee Promise. If you decide, for whatever reason, that you're not going to utilize Tennessee Promise, that's perfectly fine. You can reach out to your liaison at some point and say, we've decided not to utilize the funds or to utilize that, that process. Um, but you have to complete the application by November 1st, and there's a, a mandatory meeting that you're um that you are supposed to attend. We encourage you to do both of those things um, just in case your student decides they want to utilize Tennessee Promise. Now, Tennessee Hope, again, for our Tennessee families, the application process for Tennessee Hope is the FAFSA. So once you complete the FAFSA, the Federal Financial Aid application, that information will be transmitted to the schools that you list, and they will use that information to determine and to distribute Tennessee Hope funds. So that is up to the schools. So I would always recommend you make friends with the admissions counselors and the financial aid counselors at the schools that you're interested in. Go ahead and start developing those relationships now because those can prove invaluable as you go through the application and financial aid processes at the schools that your students might be interested in. Do we have any other questions? Um, so for the, the Tennessee Promise, uh, the app link, it is, um, it's not live yet, but if you go to College for TN, uh, it's the, the state website. So if you just Google Tennessee Promise, it'll, it'll provide you with the link to go through that, but it's, it's not, it's not open yet, so um, you can't really do a whole lot with it, but um, all of the information for the state of Tennessee for their financial aid programs for college students has have been transitioned. They were on the estate official websites like the TN.gov, but they've all been transitioned over to a new website called College for TN. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you go to that College for TN website, you can see all the information about Tennessee Hope, Tennessee Promise, um, and any other financial aid opportunities that exist for Tennesseans and through the federal aid processes as well. This, this is a good one for Mona. Um, should parents or students communicate with an admissions counselor and a financial aid counselor? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. The more the merrier, really. And it will vary from college to college, just how user-friendly those folks are, right? The and, and they all approach 
questions from a different perspective, right? So the financial person is going to be black and white, bottom line, eligibility, uh, whereas um, the admissions person is going to be all the possibilities. Come to our school. You'll love these things, you know. So you'll get different different, different perspectives from each of those uh, people, and and they are both very useful in, in, in terms of making your decision and helping walk alongside your student making those decisions for college, um, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. If if possible, connect with both. Now, the financial person, a lot of times, it makes more sense to, to hold off until they've at least narrowed down their choice to the top one or two, and they're just trying to really work through the nuts and bolts of how we're going to make this happen and you know what else can we do and we we are the ones paying the rest of the bill so help us understand you know what's at stake here and they are they're happy to help from their perspective but um but it is it is a, a little bit different you know from uh from just just being mindful and respectful for what they do uh but yeah absolutely and and many times just keep in mind when it comes to scholarships you're not going to necessarily know the bottom line amount until your student is in the middle of summer, you know, ready, ready to start picking classes. That's typically when those packages, I mean, sometimes earlier in the spring or whatever, you'll know more, but the, the bottom line numbers of what's going to be needed to, to pay the bills uh, is going to, is not going to be in place until summer. So um, yeah, and you know, I think too, like navigating who does what as far as your student and your role as a parent senior year, um, do it together because it's a training ground for them to learn how to communicate with, you know, professors and, you know, things down the road. But also, um, you know, there's a lot to do. There is a lot to do and, and they're going to be overwhelmed as a high school senior. And so that's where our role as a homeschool parent comes in is, you know, we, we help them along, you know, maybe yeah. we set aside a certain time where we're going to work on something, you know, and then have ice cream <laughs> or chips yeah. and salsa or something, but, you know, make, make some of those tasks that you do have to do relationship building <laughs> task as well. Um, that's kind of how we've navigated it. Um, I've definitely not been hands off, um, but Evan has played a role in, in some of the things too, um, so that yeah. he knows. But it's I like think you've got to check your emails and you've got to, you know, yep. and keeping it in deadlines. Even if you're doing if you're doing dual enrollment, so college classes while still in high school, in general, the college expects your student to be taking responsibility for all the things, you know, even paying the bill. If they have to wait in line at the bursar's office, they they generally expect it to be the student and not the parent or both of you together, because obviously they know parents do this, you know, pay, pay the bill or whatever. But, but many times, even on the phone, they, they, they're hesitant to answer questions because that's their protocol, right? At a college, they deal with the students and, and many times in, in dual, you know, one of the pros and cons that we talk about in terms of dual enrollment is keeping in mind that you're, the professor is not necessarily going to even know that your student is in high school. They expect them to be just like any other, you know, 21 year old in a college class. There's going to be a, depending on the situation again, but depending on the college, there's going to be a wide variety of ages, you know, experience levels. And, and in some ways that's great. And in other ways that means let's think through, is my student really ready for these social settings and are the, do they have the life skills in place to be able to be there and ask the questions, understand what they're hearing logistically, you know, behind the scenes, all of those things. So it can be a great learning opportunity, but but it's it is way beyond, you know, high school. It's co it's college. It's adulthood. So keeping keeping those things in mind are important. And we can talk more about that. And it, of course, that's going to vary from college to college, but that's the reality of what they are. If they're ready for a college class, that means not just academically, but also socially and, you know, um, just maturity level is, is there ready. So um, anyway, those Great are all good things to think about for sure. Well, as we're going to wrap this up, if anyone has any more questions, they can put that in the Q and a box and we'll try to get to them.
Yeah, and I'm going to sh share my screen again. These are our, our emails, um, just so y'all can get a, a visual on those, uh, from Mona, uh, Lacey, and, and myself. So if you have any questions about the senior year process, um, anything that we've talked about, maybe something that a question that comes to you later, please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, send us an email. We're always happy to communicate, of course, with our families, what we love to do. Um, and if you have any questions, you can send those to us and we may respond or we may send back a link and say, hey, why don't you make an appointment with me? And we can we can talk about this in, in depth uh, via a, a set appointment. So. Right. I don't see any more questions coming in. So um, I guess we'll wrap this up. Um, thank you guys so much for uh, being with us and trusting us as part of this uh, journey along with you. Um, we're here to encourage you. We're going to be the people on the side of the, the race and um, watching them cross that finish line here in another year. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, again, feel free to reach out to any of us if you have any questions or concerns. That's what we're here for. We're here to provide support and encouragement. And uh, just we hope you embrace the, the small moments of your rising seniors year for, for their benefit and for your family's benefit. Just enjoy the journey. And uh, we will be praying for you and your families as you go through the senior year experience. So thank you for joining us today. God bless. Mm -hmm.